Hi, everyone. So we've been getting a lot of questions on Piazza and office hours regarding um, the search algorithm for this project. Um, and there's been a lot of confusion about how this actually works. Um, so I'm just gonna walk through a quick example of me running through um, the search algorithm from beginning to end. Um, so let's assume for now that you have already set up um, your project. Um, we understand that our dictionary is gonna consist of a dictionary struct. So we'll have a vector of dictionary structs or whatever you decide to call it. Um, and those will have three things inside of them. It'll have the string word. It'll have your int previous, which you can just initialize to negative one for now. And then you'll have discovered, which is a bool set to false. Um, and so the idea is at this point, you will have already called your get options function. You have already read in your dictionary and it will probably look something like this. This is just kind of a representation that I've drawn for you. You can see that we have the word here, we have discovered, and then we have the previous. Um, we can also draw in our indices here. So I have zero, one, two, three, four, and five. So at this point, we're ready to start our search algorithm. And let's say for this example that the begin word is gonna be A, and our end word is going to be A, B, C, D, E. Other information that you're gonna need before we start this algorithm is gonna be the begin word index and the end word index. Um, so you're gonna to wanna to store that information or find it rather when you're reading in your dictionary. So as you read in your dictionary, you're gonna be checking, did I, um, is the word that I just read in, is that equal to the begin word? And if so, you know that you're about to put it in the dictionary.size position. Same thing with the N word. Once you see that, you'll be like, oh, I just found the N word. I'm about to push it back into my dictionary. And once I do, it will exist in the dictionary.size position. So you'll say begin word index equals whatever your dictionary name is dot size. And then after that, you'll push it back. So in this case, we'll take a look at my dictionary. We see that the begin word is A. So that's gonna be index zero. And the end word is A, B, C, D, E, which is contained at index one. All right, now we're ready to start the search algorithm. So I'll just start reading for you. This comes directly from the spec. It says, in the routing scheme, use a data structure, um, a queue or a stack, or better yet, a deck. So we're gonna use a deck of words to check whether, um, to, which we will refer to as the search container. Great, so this red line that I've drawn here is gonna represent our deck for us. And notice that it contains integers. The reason why we do this and not dictionary structs is because that's gonna to take too much memory. So we're gonna use integers and the ints that we put in there are gonna be these indexes. And anytime you wanna access the word or discovered or previous, we'll just say dictionary at whatever the index is. So first initialize the algorithm by adding the beginning word into the search container. So we're not gonna add the word itself since the deck contains ints, we're gonna add its index. And we look up at the blue and we see the index is zero. So I will add it here. Mark this word as already discovered. So I say dictionary at zero, discovered is gonna be true. Then we're gonna loop through the following steps. Okay, before we do this, because the first step says remove the next word from the search container, this becomes the current word. We're gonna have to know which element am I gonna remove? Because we can do both stack and queue. Now remember, if we want to simulate a stack with a deck, we're gonna be doing push back, push back, and then pop back, right? So it grows to the right and then shrinks from the right and that emulates the stack. And then to do a queue, we're also gonna push back, right? So it grows to the right, but then we're gonna pop from the front. So for this example, let's just pretend like we're in queue mode. So we're gonna push back, and pop back. And that will simulate a queue for us. All right, so that was step zero. We added the begin word to the search container marked as discovered. Step one of our algorithm, remove the next word from the search container. This becomes the current word. So we're gonna perform a pop back. Oh, I'm sorry, we're doing a queue. So it's gonna be pop front. Let me just fix that. So for a queue, we push back but then we pop front. So step one is we remove the word, pop front, and we set that equal to our current. And I'm just gonna put parentheses so we know what the word is. It'll make our lives a little bit easier. All right, that was step one. 
Step two is we're gonna investigate the current word. So we're gonna add all words to the search container that are sufficiently similar to, as defined by the command line, the current word that are available, meaning not already discovered. So let's assume on the command line, they've asked for all the morphs. So length is okay, swaps okay, change is okay. Everything is fair game here, just for the sake of this example. So what we're gonna do is, it says, add any such word in the following order, beginning of the dictionary to the end. Do not add words that have already been discovered. Mark each word added to the search container as discovered. So that is asking us to do a loop from the beginning to the end of the dictionary, comparing the current to whichever word we're at. So let's start. We start with index zero, and we notice that it's already been discovered, so we can't touch it. We move on to index one, and we see that it's not discovered, right? So we're gonna see if it's similar. Is there any way to get from our current, which is A, to the one that we're at, at index one, which is A, B, C, D, E? And there are no series of morphs that will allow us to do that, so we're gonna move on. Next, we're at index two. Can I get from A, my current, to A, B? Yes, we can. We can do an insert, right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna mark that as discovered. We're gonna set the previous index to, well, what are we gonna set it to? How did I get here? We'll notice that the current is index zero, and then the one that we're on right now is index two. And if you look at our current, it's A, and then the one we're on is A, B. So in order to get to A, B, I'm able to come from current, right? So I'm gonna mark current as index zero. Now we're gonna add it to the search container and we're gonna do a pushback. Awesome. We'll continue with index three. We see it's not discovered, so we're gonna check, are they similar? So can I get from A, my current to A, B, C, D? And the answer is no, there are no morphs. So we'll continue to index four. It's not discovered, so we check, can I get from A to B? Yes, we can. So I'm gonna say discovered is true. The previous index for that one is gonna be my current index, which is index zero. And then we're gonna add it to the search container. So we'll perform a pushback. Finally, we're at the last part. It says, can I get from A to ABC? And there is no way to do that. So that was, um, that was the first loop. Um, notice step three says, as you add these words to the search container, check to see if any of them is the ending word. If so, stop. That means that we've completed our search. All right, let's continue. So step one of the algorithm says, remove the next word from the search container. This becomes the current word. We're doing a Q, so we're gonna do pop front. So current no longer is this. Current is going to be two. And two's word is A, B. Now we repeat the process from beginning to end in our dictionary with a loop. So we'll start at index zero. It's discovered, so I can't do anything. Index one, not discovered. So I ask, can I get from A to B all the way to A, B, C, D, E? And the answer is no. I continue and I see that at index two, it's already discovered, so I can't do anything. Index three is not discovered. And I ask, can I get from A, B, my current to A, B, C, D? The answer is no, so we continue. Index four is already discovered. Index five, not discovered, so that's good. Can I get from A, B to A, B, C? And the answer is yes, I can just do an insert with C at the end. So we're gonna mark it as discovered. We're gonna say the previous index is my current index, which right now is two, right? And that makes sense because I can get from index two, which is A, B, to index five, which is A, B, C, by performing an insert. So we're good. And then we can't forget to add that to the search container. So we're gonna push back index five. And then step three is we check, did we reach the end word? And we never did that. Okay, so we're gonna continue again. Remove the next word from the search container. This becomes the current word. So we perform a pop front because we're doing a Q and it's gonna become four, which is B. And now I go beginning to end again, investigating the current word. So I check, index zero is discovered, can't do anything. Index one is not discovered, but I can't get from my current word B to A, B, C, D, E. So we move on, we don't touch it. Index two is already discovered. Index three is not discovered, but I can't get from B to A, B, C, D. Index four is discovered, index five is discovered. So we didn't do anything. Step one, remove from the search container. So five becomes our current word now, and that has a value of A, B, C. Step two is investigate the current word. All right, 
So index zero is discovered. Index one is not discovered, but I can't get from ABC to ABCDE. So we move on. Index two is discovered. Index three, not discovered. And I can get from ABC to ABCD. So we're going to mark it as discovered. We're going to set the previous to my current, which is five. And we're going to add it to the search container. And we're going to check the step three. Did I find the end word? ABCD is not the end word ABCDE. So we're going to keep going. Index four has been discovered. Index five has been discovered. So that's all we can do. All right. Next iteration, we pop. So we're going to say our current is equal to three, which has a value of ABCD. And now we're going to investigate. So we'll go from index zero, it's discovered. Index one, not discovered. So I'm going to say, can I get from ABCD to ABCDE? And the answer is yes, I can. So we're going to mark it as discovered. We're going to add it to our search container. Um, oh, I'm sorry. We're going to mark the previous as our current, which is three. And then we're going to add it to the search container, index one. And then step three is we're going to check. Did I get to the ending word? And right now, the answer is yes, because I'm at index one. We just added the ending word to our search container after discovering it. And we're like, great, we found the end word. So that's when the algorithm ends. And now you can see we have all this information stored in previous, and you're gonna have to figure out how you can leverage that information in order to do a process called backtracking, where you start from the end and you work back to the beginning in order to recreate your solution. You're gonna to wanna to do this probably in your output function, and it's okay to calculate this on the fly. You're not gonna to wanna to be storing this as you do it because it's gonna cause your memory to be really bad. Okay, I hope you guys all found that helpful.